Bruno Latour, French, Latou, born the 22nd of June 1947, is a French philosopher, anthropologist and sociologist. He is especially known for his work in the field of science and technology studies (STS). After teaching at the École des Mines de Paris Center de Sociologie de l'Innovation from 1982 to 2006, he became professor at Sciences Po Paris 2006 to 2017, where he was the scientific director of the Sciences Po Media Lab. He retired from several university activities in 2017. He was also a centennial professor at the London School of Economics. Latour is best known for his books We Have Never Been Modern, 1991, English Translation, 1993, Laboratory Life with Steve Wolgar, 1979, and Science in Action, 1987. Although his studies of scientific practice were at one time associated with social constructionist approaches to the philosophy of science, Latour has diverged significantly from such approaches. He is best known for withdrawing from the subjective, objective division and redeveloping the approach to work in practice. Latour said in 2017 that he is interested in helping to rebuild trust in science and that some of the authority of science needs to be regained. Along with Michel Callan and John Law, Latour is one of the primary developers of actor network theory Ant, a constructionist approach influenced by the ethnomethodology of Harold Garfinkel, the generative semiotics of Algirdas Julian Grimas, and more recently, the sociology of Émile Durkheim's rival Gabriel Tardé. Latour's monographs earned him a tenth place among most cited book authors in the humanities and social sciences for the year 2007. Biography Latour is related to a well-known family of winemakers from Burgundy, but is not associated with the similarly named estate in Bordeaux. As a student, Latour originally focused on philosophy and was deeply influenced by Michel Serre. Latour received his PhD in theology at Université de Tours. He quickly developed an interest in anthropology, and undertook fieldwork in Ivory Coast which resulted in a brief monograph on decolonization, race, and industrial relations. After spending more than 20 years at the Centre de Sociologie de l'Innovation at the École des Mines in Paris, Latour moved in 2006 to Sciences Po, where he was the first occupant of a chair named for Gabriel Tardé. In recent years he also served as one of the curators of successful art exhibitions at the Zentrum für Kunst und Medientechnologie in Karlsruhe, Germany, including Iconoclash 2002 and Making Things Public 2005. In 2005 he also held the Spinoza Chair of Philosophy at the University of Amsterdam. Topic: <laughs> Awards and Honors. On the 22nd of May 2008, Latour was awarded an honorary doctorate by the Université de Montréal on the occasion of an organizational communication conference held in honor of the work of James R. Taylor, on whom Latour has had an important influence. He holds several other honorary doctorates, as well as France's Légion d'honneur Holberg Prize On 13 March 2013, he was announced as the winner of the 2013 Holberg Prize. The prize committee stated that, Bruno Latour has undertaken an ambitious analysis and reinterpretation of modernity, and has challenged fundamental concepts such as the distinction between modern and pre-modern, nature and society, human and non-human. The committee states that, the impact of Latour's work is evident internationally and far beyond studies of the history of science, art history, history, philosophy, anthropology, geography, theology, literature and law." A 2013 article in Aftenposten by John Elster criticized the conferment to Latour, by saying, the question is, does he deserve the prize? If the statutes of the award had used new knowledge as a main criteria, instead of one of several, then he would be completely unqualified in my opinion. Topic. Main works Topic. Laboratory life After his early career efforts, Latour shifted his research interests to focus on laboratory scientists. Latour rose in importance following the 1979 publication of Laboratory Life, The Social Construction of Scientific Facts with co-author Steve Wolgar. 
In the book, the authors undertake an ethnographic study of a neuroendocrinology research laboratory at the Salk Institute. This early work argued that naive descriptions of the scientific method, in which theories stand or fall on the outcome of a single experiment, are inconsistent with actual laboratory practice. In the laboratory, Latour and Woolgar observed that a typical experiment produces only inconclusive data that is attributed to failure of the apparatus or experimental method, and that a large part of scientific training involves learning how to make the subjective decision of what data to keep and what data to throw out. Latour and Woolgar argued that, for untrained observers, the entire process resembles not an unbiased search for truth and accuracy but a mechanism for ignoring data that contradicts scientific orthodoxy. Latour and Woolgar produced a highly heterodox and controversial picture of the sciences. Drawing on the work of Gaston Bachelard, they advance the notion that the objects of scientific study are socially constructed within the laboratory that they cannot be attributed with an existence outside of the instruments that measure them and the minds that interpret them. They view scientific activity as a system of beliefs, oral traditions and culturally specific practices. In short, science is reconstructed not as a procedure or as a set of principles but as a culture. Latour's 1987 book Science in Action, How to Follow Scientists and Engineers Through Society is one of the key texts of the sociology of scientific knowledge in which he famously wrote his second principle as follows, "...scientists and engineers speak in the name of new allies that they have shaped and enrolled, representatives among other representatives, they add these unexpected resources to tip the balance of force in their favor." Some of Latour's position and findings in this era provoked vehement rebuttals. Gross and Levitt argue that Latour's position becomes absurd when applied to non-scientific contexts, e.g., if a group of co-workers in a windowless room were debating whether or not it were raining outside and went outdoors to discover raindrops in the air and puddles on the soil, Latour's hypothesis would assert that the rain was socially constructed. Similarly, philosopher John Searle argues that Latour's extreme social constructivist Position is seriously flawed on several points, and furthermore has inadvertently comical results. The pasteurization of France After a research project examining the sociology of primatologists, Latour followed up the themes in laboratory life with Les Microbes, Guerre et Pay, published in English as The Pasteurization of France in 1988. In it, he reviews the life and career of one of France's most famous scientists Louis Pasteur and his discovery of microbes, in the fashion of a political biography. Latour highlights the social forces at work in and around Pasteur's career and the uneven manner in which his theories were accepted. By providing more explicitly ideological explanations for the acceptance of Pasteur's work more easily in some quarters than in others, he seeks to undermine the notion that the acceptance and rejection of scientific theories is primarily, or even usually, a matter of experiment, evidence or reason. Another work, Aramis, or, The Love of Technology focuses on the history of an unsuccessful mass transit project. Topic. We have never been modern. Latour's work Nous Navens Jages et Modernes, Essays d'Anthropologie Symmetrique was first published in French in 1991, and then in English in 1993 as We Have Never Been Modern. Latour encouraged the reader of this anthropology of science to rethink and re-evaluate our mental landscape. He evaluated the work of scientists and contemplated the contribution of the scientific method to knowledge and work, blurring the distinction across various fields and disciplines. Latour argued that society has never really been modern and promoted nonmodernism or a modernism over postmodernism, modernism, or antimodernism. His stance was that we have never been modern and minor divisions alone separate Westerners now from other collectives. Latour viewed modernism as an era that believed it had annulled the entire past in its wake. He presented the antimodern reaction as defending such entities as spirit, rationality, liberty, society, God, or even the past. Postmoderns, according to Latour, also accepted the modernistic abstractions as if they were real. In contrast, the nonmodern approach re-established symmetry between science and technology on the one hand and society on the other. 
Latour also referred to the impossibility of returning to premodernism because it precluded the large scale experimentation which was a benefit of modernism. Latour attempted to prove through case studies the fallacy in the old object, subject, and nature society compacts of modernity, which can be traced back to Plato. He refused the concept of out there versus in here. He rendered the object subject distinction as simply unusable and charted a new approach towards knowledge, work, and circulating reference. Latour considered nonmoderns to be playing on a different field, one vastly different than that of postmoderns. He referred to it as much broader and much less polemical, a creation of an unknown territory, which he playfully referred to as the Middle Kingdom. In 1998, historian of science Margaret C. Jacob argued that Latour's politicized account of the development of modernism in the 17th century is a fanciful escape from modern Western history. Topic: <laughs> Pandora's Hope. Pandora's Hope 1999 marks a return to the themes Latour explored in Science in Action and We Have Never Been Modern. It uses independent but thematically linked essays and case studies to question the authority and reliability of scientific knowledge. Latour uses a narrative, anecdotal approach in a number of the essays, describing his work with pedologists in the Amazon rainforest, the development of the pasteurization process, and the research of French atomic scientists at the outbreak of the Second World War. Latour states that this specific, anecdotal approach to science studies is essential to gaining a full understanding of the discipline. The only way to understand the reality of science studies is to follow what science studies do best, that is, paying close attention to the details of scientific practice. p. 24. Some authors have criticized Latour's methodology, including Catherine Pandora, a history of science professor at the University of Oklahoma. In her review of Pandora's Hope, Catherine Pandora states, Latour's writing can be stimulating, fresh and at times genuinely moving, but it can also display a distractingly mannered style in which a rococo zeal for compounding metaphors, examples, definitions and abstractions can frustrate even readers who approach his work with the best of intentions notwithstanding the inclusion of a nine-page glossary of terms and liberal use of diagrams in an attempt to achieve the utmost clarity. In addition to his epistemological concerns, Latour also explores the political dimension of science studies in Pandora's Hope. Two of the chapters draw on Plato's Gorges as a means of investigating and highlighting the distinction between content and context. As Catherine Pandora states in her review, it is hard not to be caught up in the author's obvious delight in deploying a classic work from antiquity to bring current concerns into sharper focus, following along as he manages to leave the reader with the impression that the protagonists Socrates and Calicles are not only in dialogue with each other but with Latour as well." Although Latour frames his discussion with a classical model, his examples of fraught political issues are all current and of continuing relevance. Global warming, the spread of mad cow disease, and the carcinogenic effects of smoking are all mentioned at various points in Pandora's Hope. In Felix Stalder's article, Beyond Constructivism, Towards a Realistic Realism, he summarizes Latour's position on the political dimension of science studies as follows. These scientific debates have been artificially kept open in order to render impossible any political action against these problems and those who profit from them. Topic: Why has critique run out of steam? In a 2004 article, Latour questioned the fundamental premises on which he had based most of his career, asking was I wrong to participate in the invention of this field known as science studies? He undertakes a trenchant critique of his own field of study and, more generally, of social criticism in contemporary academia. He suggests that critique, as currently practiced, is bordering on irrelevancy. To maintain any vitality, Latour argues that social critiques require a drastic reappraisal. Our critical equipment deserves as much critical scrutiny as the Pentagon budget. P. 231. To regain focus and credibility, Latour argues that social critiques must embrace empiricism, to insist on the cultivation of a stubbornly realist attitude, to speak like William James. P. 233. 
Latour suggests that about 90% of contemporary social criticism displays one of two approaches which he terms the fact position and the fairy position. P. 237 The fairy position is anti-fetishist, arguing that objects of belief, e.g., religion, arts, are merely concepts created by the projected wishes and desires of the naive believer. The fact position argues that individuals are dominated, often covertly and without their awareness, by external forces e.g., economics, gender, p. 238. Do you see now why it feels so good to be a critical mind? asks Latour, no matter which position you take. You're always right, p. 238-239 Social critics tend to use anti-fetishism against ideas they personally reject, to use an unrepentant positivist. Approach for fields of study they consider valuable, all the while thinking as a perfectly healthy sturdy realist for what you really cherish. P. 241 These inconsistencies and double standards go largely unrecognized in social critique because there is never any crossover between the two lists of objects in the fact position and the fairy position. P. 241 the practical result of these approaches being taught to millions of students in elite universities for several decades is a widespread and influential, critical barbarity, that has, like a malign virus created by a, mad scientist, thus far proven impossible to control. Most troubling, Latour notes that critical ideas have been appropriated by those he describes as conspiracy theorists, including global warming skeptics and the 9-11 truth movement. Maybe I am taking conspiracy theories too seriously, but I am worried to detect, in those mad mixtures of knee-jerk disbelief, punctilious demands for proofs, and free use of powerful explanation from the social neverland, many of the weapons of social critique." p. 230. The conclusion of the article is to argue for a positive framing of critique, to help understand how matters of concern can be supported rather than undermined. The critic is not the one who lifts the rugs from under the feet of the naive believers, but the one who offers the participants arenas in which to gather. The critic is not the one who alternates haphazardly between antifetishism and positivism like the drunk iconoclast drawn by Goya, but the one for whom, if something is constructed, then it means it is fragile and thus in great need of care and caution. Reassembling the Social In Reassembling the Social 2005, Latour continues a reappraisal of his work, developing what he calls a practical metaphysics, which calls real anything that an actor one whom we are studying claims as a source of motivation for action. So if someone says, I was inspired by God to be charitable to my neighbors, we are obliged to recognize the ontological weight of their claim, rather than attempting to replace their belief in God's presence with social stuff, like class, gender, imperialism, etc. Latour's nuanced metaphysics demands the existence of a plurality of worlds, and the willingness of the researcher to chart ever more. He argues that researchers must give up the hope of fitting their actors into a structure or framework, but Latour believes the benefits of this sacrifice far outweigh the downsides. Their complex metaphysics would at least be respected, their recalcitrance recognized, their objections deployed, their multiplicity accepted. For Latour, to talk about metaphysics or ontology what really is means paying close empirical attention to the various, contradictory institutions and ideas that bring people together and inspire them to act. Here is Latour's description of metaphysics. If we call metaphysics the discipline, that purports to define the basic structure of the world, then empirical metaphysics is what the controversies over agencies lead to since they ceaselessly populate the world with new drives and, as ceaselessly, contest the existence of others. The question then becomes how to explore the actor's own metaphysics. A more traditional metaphysicist might object, arguing that this means there are multiple, contradictory realities, since there are controversies over agencies. Since there is a plurality of contradictory ideas that people claim as a basis for action God, nature, the state, sexual drives, personal ambition, and so on. This objection manifests the most important difference between traditional philosophical metaphysics and Latour's nuance. For Latour, there is no basic structure of reality or a single, self-consistent world. An unknowably large multiplicity of realities, or worlds 
In his terms, exists one for each actor's sources of agency, inspirations for action. Actors bring the real metaphysics into being. The task of the researcher is not to find one basic structure that explains agency, but to recognize the metaphysical innovations proposed by ordinary actors. Mapping those metaphysical innovations involves a strong dedication to relativism, Latour argues. The relativist researcher learns the actor's language, records what they say about what they do, and does not appeal to a higher structure to explain the actor's motivations. The relativist takes seriously what actors are obstinately saying and follows the direction indicated by their fingers when they designate what makes them act. The relativist recognizes the plurality of metaphysics that actors bring into being, and attempts to map them rather than reducing them to a single structure or explanation. Bibliography Books Latour, Bruno, Woolgar, Steve Laboratory Life, The Construction of Scientific Facts. Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press. ISBN 9780691094182 Originally published 1979 in Los Angeles, by Sage Publications Latour, Bruno 1987. Science in Action, How to Follow Scientists and Engineers Through Society. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674792175. Latour, Bruno 1988. The Pasteurization of France. Translated by Alan Sheridan and John Law. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674656789. Latour, Bruno 1993. We Have Never Been Modern. Translated by Catherine Porter. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674948175. Latour, Bruno 1996. Aramis, or the Love of Technology. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674043381. Latour, Bruno 1999. Pandora's Hope – Essays on the Reality of Science Studies. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674658175. Latour, Bruno 2004. Politics of Nature – How to Bring the Sciences into Democracy. Translated by Catherine Porter. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674013381. Latour, Bruno 2005. Making Things Public, Atmospheres of Democracy. Cambridge, Massachusetts Karlsruhe, Germany, MIT Press ZKM, Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe. ISBN 9780262122275. Latour, Bruno 2005. Reassembling the Social, An Introduction to Actor Network Theory. Oxford, New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780199256375. Latour, Bruno 2010. On the Modern Cult of the Factish Gods. Durham, North Carolina, London, Duke University Press. ISBN 9780822348275. Latour, Bruno 2010. The Making of Law, An Ethnography of the Conseil d'État. Cambridge, UK Malden, Massachusetts, Polity. ISBN 9780745633275. Latour, Bruno 2013. Rejoicing, or the Torments of Religious Speech. Translated by Julie Rose. 
Cambridge, UK, Polity. ISBN 9780745660000. Latour, Bruno An Inquiry into Modes of Existence, An Anthropology of the Moderns. Translated by Catherine Porter. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674724000. Latour, Bruno Face a Gaia, Huit conférences sur le nouveau régime climatique. France, Editions La Découverte. ISBN 9782359251. Chapters in books Latour, Bruno, Callan, Michel Don't Throw the Baby Out with the Bath School. A Reply to Collins and Yearly. In Pickering, Andrew, Science as Practice and Culture, Chicago, Illinois, University of Chicago Press, pp. 343-368, ISBN 9780226668000. Latour, Bruno Where are the Missing Masses? The Sociology of a Few Mundane Artifacts. In Biker, Weeby E., Law, John, Shaping Technology, Building Society, Studies in Sociotechnical Change, Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press, pp. 225-258, ISBN 9780262521. Latour, Bruno 1992. A Summary of Convenient Vocabulary for the Semiotics of Human and Non-Human Assemblies." In Biker, Weeby E., Law, John, Shaping Technology, Building Society, Studies in Sociotechnical Change, Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press, pp. 259–264, ISBN 9780262521949. Latour, Bruno 1992. Whose Cosmos, Which Cosmopolitics? Comments on the Peace Terms of Ulrich Beck. In Robertson von Trotha, Caroline Y., Kultur und Gerichtigkeit, Kulturwissenschaft Interdiscipliner, Interdisciplinary Studies on Culture and Society, Vol. 2, Baden-Baden, Nomos, ISBN 9783832927. Latour, Bruno 2015, Les Vues de l'Esprit. Une introduction à l'anthropologie des sciences et des techniques, in Emmanuel Aloa, Penser Limage 2. Anthropologies du visual, Dijon, Les Presses du Rail, pp. 207-256, ISBN 978-2-84066-557-1. Journal articles Latour, Bruno March 2000. When Things Strike Back, A Possible Contribution of Science Studies to the Social Sciences. British Journal of Sociology. Wiley. 51 107-123. doi.10.1111.j.1468-4444. To 4,446.2000.00107, X. Topic. See also. Acton. Blackboxing. Obligatory passage point. Aramis. Aramis, or the love of technology. Technological determinism. Science wars. Social construction of technology Graphism thesis Mapping controversies Fashionable nonsense Topic. References Topic. External links Bruno Latour's website